Medication overuse headache uh, refers to headaches that are thought to be induced by using abortive migraine medications too frequently. So let's keep in mind that there, there are two main categories of medications used for migraine. Um, so almost everyone with migraine needs these abortive or acute medications. So these are medications that individuals take once they have a migraine attack to try to reduce the severity or optimally to abort that attack. And then of course there's the other category which are preventive medications. And these are used by folks that have higher frequency migraine attacks or very disabling migraine attacks. Um, and preventive medicines are intended to reduce the frequency of the attacks overall. So when we talk about medication overuse and medication overuse headache, we're talking about the frequent use of these abortive or acute medications. So there are specific criteria as to exactly what defines medication overuse headache. Um, in general, uh, they can be in two categories. So if it's just simple analgesics, um, then it's if they're used on 15 or more days per month, and that meets criteria for medication overuse. Um, whereas if it's really any other of the migraine uh, abortive medications or a combination of those medications, then if someone's using them on 10 or more days per month, then they're considered to be in a medication overuse pattern. Now this has to be an average over three months. So you know a single month of using beyond that threshold does not meet criteria. That has to be a pattern that you see over three months. The concern is that when people are in this medication overuse pattern, um, it's a risk factor for having an increase of migraine frequency over time. So for example, it's a risk factor for transitioning from what's called episodic migraine to chronic migraine. So less frequent to more frequent attacks. Um, in addition, it can cause medication overuse headache in some individuals, which is a little bit different than what we just said, because here we're thinking that the medication itself is actually causing headaches. So there probably are certain types of medications that are more likely uh, to lead to medication overuse headache. Um, so the, the worst offenders, if you will, are likely to be the opioids, and then they'd be Tobitol containing medications, um, like uh, is contained in several of the, the combination medications with like acetaminophen or an NSAID uh, with caffeine. So medication overuse is, is unfortunately highly prevalent in the uh, migraine community. It's unfortunate because if our preventive therapies worked better, then perhaps it wouldn't be so prevalent. Um, but amongst those with chronic migraine, which as a reminder, those are individuals who have 15 or more headache days per month, of which at least eight are full-blown migraine attacks. Amongst that group of chronic migraineurs, about half of people in the general population fit into this medication overuse category. In our headache specialty clinics, the number is probably much higher. So the MOTS trial is the Medication Overuse Treatment Strategy trial. Um, so this is a large pragmatic clinical trial that's being funded by PCORI, which is the Patient Centered Outcomes Research Institute. And so the main goal of the MOTS trial is to determine the best treatment strategy uh, for individuals who have chronic migraine with medication overuse. And you can hear that I'm trying to put some emphasis on the word strategy because it's not a specific a treatment. It's not a sp specific medication, but it's actually the strategy of treating these individuals. So we all know that if someone's in a medication overuse pattern, that the ultimate goal is for them to get out of that pattern, to use less frequent acute medications. Um, but the, how to get there, what's the best way to achieve that is really the question in the MOTS trial. So individuals in the MOTS trial are being enrolled um, from about 30 different centers around the country. And patients are randomized to one of two treatment strategy arms. In both of the strategies, these individuals receive preventive therapy, so preventive medication, right, because everyone who has chronic migraine with medication overuse probably needs a preventive therapy, or at least it should be offered to them. But the difference is that in one of the treatment strategies, uh, the individual is asked to switch from the medication that they're overusing um, to an alternate medication, and they can use that alternate medication on a limited frequency so that they're no longer in that medication overuse pattern. In the other therapy, the preventive therapy is either started or optimized, um, but the individual is not given instructions to immediately switch from their overuse therapy. The idea is, is that in that category, um, as the preventive kicks in, um, that their migraine frequency is going to reduce and that they'll naturally reduce the use of their acute medications over the next few months. So we'll look and see if the strategies provide similar outcomes three months later, so that's the time of our primary outcome. And if they do provide similar outcomes, then we're gonna look and see what happens in those first two weeks after randomization. So how do people do in those first two weeks? So for example, in those individuals who are told to immediately switch from their overuse medication, 
do they have more frequent moderate to severe headaches during those first two weeks than individuals who didn't have to immediately switch? We'll also, quite frankly, look at adherence. I mean, is it possible for patients to adhere to these two treatment strategies? In clinical practice, we oftentimes hear that it's difficult for people to immediately switch from their overused medication. Um, so in the trial, we'll, we'll be able to measure, you know, could people actually do that? So results from the MOTCH trial are, are gonna have a direct influence on how clinicians treat their patients who have chronic migraine with medication overuse. There's clearly currently clinical equipoise. So we really do not know which treatment strategy is the best for our patients and has the best outcomes. Um, you can see this, uh, that if you go to national and international meetings over the last several years, there, there are debates between top experts in the field about which is the best strategy. Um, you can see this in publications. There have been you know, conflicting or, or, or contradictory publications about what the best uh, treatment strategy is, again, for these folks. Um, so we truly don't know the answer, um, and I believe that the answer from the MOTCH trial um, is going to then directly impact the recommendations that we give to our patients. The best thing for clinicians to do when thinking about medication overuse and medication overuse headache is to prevent it from occurring in the first place, right? So number one, we need to educate our patients about medication overuse and medication overuse headache. Most patients don't know about this unless we've directly told them. Um, quite frankly, it hardly even makes intuitive sense until you hear about it. So you know, if you're out there having frequent migraines, uh, what are you going to do? You're going to treat them. Um, and most individuals on their own aren't going to come to some sort of realization that that might eventually have a negative effect. So education is number one. Um, and there have been studies showing that education alone certainly has a positive impact on reducing the rates of medication overuse and medication overuse headache. Number two is we should put limits on the frequency with which individuals can take their migraine abortive medications. So even if you don't want to specifically remember the ICHD criteria for, for cutoffs, a general rule of thumb is that your patients, on average, shouldn't be using these abortives more than two to three days per week. Third is to uh, avoid whenever possible, which is almost always, avoid some of these medications which are the worst offenders when treating migraine, like opiates, like butobutol-containing medications. Uh, fourth is to make sure that we're really uh, looking at trends over time. Right? So it is, we, we all know that patients can have a bad month or two where maybe they're going to exceed the limits that we would uh, like for them for, in regards to the use of their acute medication. But when you follow someone closely, you can oftentimes see trends. Is, is it that each month their use of migraine abortives is slowly going up? You, know, you should try to inter intervene at that point when you start seeing that slope going up rather than waiting for someone to get into to a bad pattern. How do you intervene? Well, you intervene by uh, having the conversation with the patient, re-educating them, perhaps making changes to their preventive therapy, recommending uh, changes to, to lifestyle and, and trigger avoidance uh, when applicable.